So I get a lot of questions about Topaz workflow and which Topaz products I use. So in this video, I wanted to show you guys my workflow for Topaz and the different Topaz products that I use and recommend. I also take a minute just to share with you guys my office setup because it's changed quite a bit and quite happy with the way it is now. To show you guys my workflow for Topaz, I'll pick an image and do some light editing on it as well just to show you guys the whole kind of sequence that I go through. Okay, so let's just dive into it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys my workflow on this image of a puffin that I took recently when I was at uh, Fowl's Hue Nature Reserve. So before I go to Topaz Denoise, which is the first step of the workflow, I do a couple of things to the image. And first thing, I choose a camera profile. Because after you upload your image and go through Topaz Denoise and you get back into Lightroom, you won't have the option to change this anymore. Uh, very often I go for Adobe Landscape. I like what it does. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit too intense and I don't do it, but I found that I use usually works for me. I also change the white balance first. So I tend to go by eye, something like that. And this is a little bit dark. I can increase the exposure here, but I don't increase the exposure in Lightroom before Denoise. I've tried that and I didn't like the results. I thought it was better to do that after uh, Denoise. So I leave that alone, but I did try and raise the shadows in a test. I found that raising the shadows before Denoise didn't negatively impact the image. So very often I will raise the shadow a little bit before I do Denoise like that and I'll go down with the highlights a little bit as well to get a little bit more feather detail in the white parts of the puffin here. And that's it. Next step is Topaz Denoise. And I do that from within Lightroom, go to edit in and Topaz Denoise. Edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Yes. Denoise is the Topaz product I trust the most. I usually always just leave it for standard and just set this to automatic. Uh, only times I change it, if it is very low light, I change it to low light. That seems to do a good job. And sometimes I will increase the noise lighter. Um, other than that, usually for, let's say 99 or 95% of the images, that's fine. And uh, some of them, if I have fairly poor quality, but I want to process the image anyways, I'll start messing about with enhancing sharpness and recover original detail. But that's rarely that I do that. Usually it works fine with the automatic settings and I can just go apply right away. I'm just gonna stop the process there for a second. I really wanna show you guys my setup for photo editing in my home office. And recently I did a little bit of research and turns out that I had a lot of things set up a little bit wrong. I had the window behind my screen and I never pulled down the curtains, I had a lot of reflections coming off my screen and it's quite a strain actually having the brightness all the way turned up as well on my eyes. So as I was doing this research, Ben Q actually reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try out the Monitor Light Screen Bar Plus. So Perfect timing, that was ideal for me. So I said yes to that, they've sent me one and I've used it ever since, I actually really like it. So now the changes that I've made is, I've actually set up my office a little bit differently so it's easier for me just to kind of pull the curtain here on my side and I use the light that they've given me to illuminate the screen and it causes no reflections or anything like that. So I'm really liking this kind of dark room effect for editing my photos as well. It causes me just to really get into the editing a lot more. I have a camera up there, but exactly where it sits, it is just above the camera. So it doesn't interfere with the camera in any way and I can have zoom calls and all of that. And it's held in place by a weighted lever on the back. So it sits very rigid, but it's also easy to just take off if I want to. It's powered by a USB cable that connects to my computer and apparently the LED panel in the light here should have a life of over 50,000 hours, which is definitely more time than I would ever want to spend sitting editing photos on my computer. So there's a dial to adjust the brightness and there's a button to switch between brightness or temperature so you can adjust the temperature as well. But there's also a button that sets the brightness and white balance automatically depending on the, the kind of ambient light that you have already in your office. So there's a sensor on the controller as well that measures that. Now, if you go for the automatic option, it sets the brightness to 500 
LUX, which apparently is the recommended illuminance level for an office. Now, I turned the brightness on my monitor a little bit down, but not too much. I don't want it to affect the colors or anything like that, but I brighten it a little bit more with the light, and uh, I'm really enjoying the setup, and I can already feel that it's a little bit less strenuous on my eyes when I spend hours editing photos and videos. Anyway, I thought I would just share that with you guys, and I want to thank BenQ so much for sending me light, and if anybody's interested, I'll leave a link below where you can purchase one of these lights or you can go to the website to read more information about it. So thanks for that. Let's go back into my Topaz editing workflow. It ends up in Lightroom right next to the image you have. Now, because you end up with loads of dip copies of the same image with small changes, I like to color code them. Go for eight, which is green. Let me have set this image to green and it's Topaz Denoise, uh, I think the logo is green, so that helps me kind of just associate that image, that it, I mean, that step of the process. So now we're going to some light editing here in uh, Lightroom, uh, about cropping it, something I do here, and I might try and crop out this white stuff in the back here because I don't really like it. Let's see if it makes a difference. Okay, something like that. And uh, now I can increase the exposure a bit. Very often use graduated filter just to kind of darken this foreground a little bit. Not going crazy. And toggle on and off just to see that it's kind of okay. Go the contrast. Okay, I'm going to keep this fairly simple. Now, if there's any kind of details that I want to make changes to, or if I feel like Photoshop, I need it in Photoshop, this is when I go right click and I edit in Photoshop. If I have edited the image in Photoshop, I will use Topaz Sharpen after Photoshop. But I'm gonna skip Photoshop now because I don't think this image needs it. And we'll go straight into Topaz Sharpen. Now, Topaz Sharpen is a program that I don't always use. Um, Denoise, that was, I will pretty much use all the time, except for when I have a crystal clean image, I don't feel like I need any noise reduction on, but usually I will need it. So Topaz Sharpen, I don't trust it as much as Denoise. So, but let's go for the automatic settings. Usually what happens here is I find that it does a little bit, of, goes a little bit overboard and I need to back it off a little bit. So let's see what it comes up with here for the first preview. Now, my main concern with uh, Topaz Sharpen is that it creates a little bit of weird artifacts here sometimes. Sometimes they sharpen things that I don't want or need sharpened. You can see down here, it's created something down here which is not there. I think that the newer versions of Topaz is better at this, but I, I still find it to be a little bit of an issue. So what I used to do, I used to edit more of my images in Photoshop and I used to do Topaz Sharpen there so I could have it on a layer and I could take away anything I didn't like. But um, I guess I just wanna speed up my workflow a little bit and I tend to try a little bit quicker. You see here as well, it's kind of sharpened things in here, which you know, they're, they're not really necessary and it looks a bit weird to me. So now what I do, I tend to, first of all, I tend to back off sharpening a little bit. I, th I usually think it does a little bit too much. Next thing I do mask within here. And basically what I just do is I just mask over what, I basically mask over what I want sharpened. 
So, and in this image, it really is just the head of the puffin here that needs to be sharp. Um, the rest is pretty much out of focus. So I'm just gonna, and I don't even, like I don't go very carefully over this or anything like that. I just make a little mask over the head here and then apply mask and I see what that looks like. So as you can see now, it doesn't create any of the kind of weird artifacts around here where, um, where it did it earlier. And it is just applying sharpening to the head of the puffin. And I've also reduced it a little bit so it's not so intense. So I'm very happy with that and we'll go apply. Okay, so now we end up with a third copy of that image and I use a color code again, number nine set to, set to blue, so topaz sharpen is blue, but I will use um, I will use nine anyways if I've just used Photoshop just to kind of say that that's, that's the finished image, that's the final image that I got. Uh, might actually go a little bit brighter with this, get this a little bit dark. Topaz Sharpen now, I find that it can take a little bit longer as well, but I keep updating these products and they become better and better. Uh, but that time that it takes for you to look away from the image and it comes back into Lightroom, you might see it with a new, a new view and you might kind of just, oh, okay, I need, to, I need to just change a couple of more things here. But usually that's it. Uh, I like to just double tap L just to see it dark and okay. So it's time to export the image from Lightroom and go up here and file an export. And I tend to export for different social media and these kind of things. But what I wanted to show here today was the uh, my print one. So I'm going to do the LR export, Lightroom export in this folder. Choose that. Uh, just rename this to Puffin. And I have all this set up to what I'm recommended by the printing company that I use. So it's, it's probably going to be different for the different printers you use and stuff. So let's export that. And I like to use gigapixels outside of Lightroom and just keep my images then in folders as opposed to keeping this image, uh, which is going to be quite large in Lightroom as well. So for, to do that, I drag my export into Gigapixel and creates a really close up image which I don't need to see. It's got a 50%. Okay. And as you can see here, the image, the original image here is just over 4,000 pixels on the width. So the long end here. And let's say I want to print this to a 40 by 30 inch image. I set the max width here for 12,000 pixels across here. And that means that um, it's basically taking the 40 inches and multiplied it by 300 pixels per inch, which I think is what is recommended for the printer that I use. Um, so this is then the new dimensions and it then multiplies it by 2.85. And just to check that it doesn't like compromise image quality or anything like that, then you can kind of check the update here, and see what it looks like. That's pretty good to me. Actually, it looks a little bit sharper here. I mean, this is really close up. You're not going to be viewing a print this close up anyways. So save that and change this again to what is recommended by your printing company. So I think TIFF, I think it was 16 bit and uh, boom, boom, boom. I think it was Adobe RGB, but all these kind of things is you need to set these to the, the printing company you use, or if you have your own printer or whatever, then, you know, that's how you find out what, um, what these values should be and what is recommended. Uh, for me though, let's just do this. I'm going to put this into the folder that I created right next to the LR export and then gigapixel export, just so I kind of have a little bit of a system on where I keep things. So this is the process you definitely could do a batch thing on. I would, and that's why I like to do everything outside as well. I'll, 
I'll just create loads of images here in the LR export folder and all the ones I want to print. And then I chuck them all into gigapixels at the same time. And I, I just batch export them. And I just leave, uh, leave my computer to do its thing and I go away because this takes a little bit of time, but it is really worth it. And I will show you guys, I did a little section of an image that I, um, so it, take, it takes a test print and it does, it just does an A4 section of the main image. And I did exactly this. I wanted to print it at 40 by 30. So I increased it almost three times. I'll show you guys the output of that, which I'm super happy with. I thought it was really good. So in order to test how Gigapixel works, I increased this image by same thing. It was about three times. I increased it, the pixels on the long edge to 12,000 pixels. And this is just a test print that you can get from most printing companies. So this is just a section, an A4 section out of the total image. And I think it looks really good. And I cannot tell a difference uh, if I would print it that much smaller it would look, it basically looks exactly the same. So really happy with that. And if you do print your images and you want to print big, then Topaz Gigapixel is just the way to go. Like it's an amazing product. So highly recommend that. And yeah, out of the two products, Denoise Gigapixels way up there. Sharpen is good, but you know, not in the same league. So that is my Topaz editing workflow. There's a couple of other programs that I'm trying out, but I haven't really got used to them so much that I can recommend them just yet. Uh, and that is Topaz Adjust. And that is that would go at some point, probably after Denoise for me, uh, if I use it. And that's a little bit, they have a lot of filters there, or you know they have a lot of different looks and filters, so you can kind of apply them. And very often I think they're a bit over the top, but there's a, percentage for how much you actually want of that to show. So I've experimented with that a little bit and I do like the idea of just speeding up my workflow and not sitting tweaking and editing my images so much. I'm not the kind of person that can sit for hours and hours to edit one image. I like to speed up that process. So I'm experimenting with Topaz Adjust and I will let you guys know how I get on with that. Another thing that I want to try is Video Enhance and that is for my videos and it basically means that you know you can increase the quality to a higher quality than what you actually film with. I got a recent email about their newest update and it also talks about uh, ways of slowing down your footage even if you didn't film in a higher frame rate. So I'm, I'm excited to experiment with that but it is a bit time consuming so that's why I haven't given it too much of a, of a try just yet. But I will give you an update if I you know if I start to use any of those two programs in my workflow then I will let you know. Anyways, I have added links to all the products below and you can sign up, get 30 days free trial. So, you know, try it out for yourself, see what works for you, you know, and get the ones that you like. I also have a promo code which you can use. I'll leave it below. It is friend15 and you can use that to get another 15% off your purchase. And I've been told that that should work on top of a lot of the promotions already. So give it a shot and uh, I hope you get on well with them. I'll catch you soon. Bye.